Well, fundamentally, I'm an artist who makes their sculptures move. I do kinetic art, so I'm not, you know, a roboticist as such. A sort of random way of going about things, and it is definitely my way, and maybe not the way that uh, someone else might do it. I was working on uh, restoring a, a robot called Saigon, which was um, the first foreign humanoid robot to uh, come into England. And uh, I was just halfway through restoring that, and, and um, I know the Science Museum wanted it in the exhibition. And then they, Ben Russell contacted me to, um, to, to do a complete exact replica of uh, Eric, and uh, said, was I interested? And doing it and um, yeah I thought it was a challenge and I yeah went for it and I think the hardest thing is going to be making it an exact replica because it some bits I as an artist I quite like to change because uh, some bits to me aesthetically don't look right but I will keep it um, exact for the sake of the project and um, yeah it's going to be a challenge This is stage one, and, and it's basically the armature stage where you, you, you build the main frame and the, the sort of the, basically the robot skeleton. And, uh, and this involves making it sturdy but lightweight and putting in these, these motors, which are called linear actuators, and they're all 12 volt, which keeps it nice and safe. And, um, and they're nice and quiet, do a smooth job. So this is the arm. They're normally used for things like hospital beds and, or dentist chairs where you need sort of uh, smooth, quiet motion. In fact, sometimes they're used for like even just opening windows you can't reach. And I like them because they're 12 volt and they're pretty powerful. And I sort of, I tend to shy away from, from, from mains voltage because it's just, it's too dangerous for me. <laughs> and. Uh, this one here, which will be controlling the head, this is a radio control servo, which um, would be normally used for uh, sort of steering a radio controlled car or something like that, or maybe aeroplane wings. These, these two big motors here, they have to take all of Eric's weight and they're, they're there to, to make him stand up. And that's, they're quite slow, but they're very powerful because he's got a lot of weight on him. So they're, they sort of come up to here and he's, he stands up like that. This one here is his torso and it, that straightens his back as he stands up. And these two here are going to do his arms. I'm going to show you in a minute. And these ones do his elbows. So this should raise the arm up and down. It's all looking good. And this should bring the elbow in. This is another good thing about 12 volt, is you can't really electrocute yourself. That's all smooth. And on the battery charger, the, why I use this battery charger is because it's got a little amp meter in it, so it tells me if, if there's any sort of resistance that's going to cause a problem later on. Let's see if it goes down again. Beautiful. Everyone has their different ways of working, don't they? I mean, some people draw it out meticulously on paper and work that way, and they're happy working that way. But for me, I'm, I do everything by eye. This is the, the head. This is the basic eye movement. This is another uh, radio control servo. And this, will, this moves the eyes from side to side. And uh, we're going to have um, LEDs in here, so they'll be lit up. And the mouth area is sort of here. And we're going to have another um, sort of sound to light LED system here, which means he'll, he'll, he'll flash when he, um, when he speaks in time with his voice. I think the original one had sparks coming out, but um, I think we're not going to do that because it's not particularly appropriate for the exhibition. But um, yeah, so this is the eye mechanism. It's, very, it's, it's almost like a sort of radio control car sort of steering setup where it just sort of moves. These would normally be the wheels but I'm, I'm using it to turn the eyes. And then I've sort of tried to get a basic sort of bone structure for um, to put his head, to put his, sort of the aluminium on. Which, and it's, it's tricky because, I don't know if you can see, but like he's got this, they've sort of given him a jawbone, which is weird, and then this other bit of neck comes up the back there. So yeah, I have to 
redo that a couple of times. Let's spin the head on here, and you can see how it's kind of taking, starting to take form, the whole robot. And I, I've got ideas of the sort of character, I think, that will emerge out of, out of the build in the end. And uh, I mean, Eric was described as the quintessential um, gentleman, I believe, English gentleman. So I imagine he's going to be quite a sort of dignified character, which means I won't be giving him any shakes. And uh, yeah, he's meant to be very sort of polite and um, rather posh, I believe. So yeah, we'll see if he keeps that regal touch. We've had the workshop for about um, 15 years now, and uh, it is a great feeling. You come in in the morning and uh, you close the door behind you. I just love being in that frame of mind, um, sort of shutting the outside world away and just getting creative. It's a, it's a great feeling and it feels a real sort of privilege to be able to do that on a daily basis. For Eric's basic movements, I use 12 volt linear actuators and they simply um, push in and out. So you can use them for your arms going up and down, elbows moving, etc. Once Eric's all wired up and ready to go, you, you, you run through each motor, test that it's all working, and then you open up this program called VSA, which is where you program the movements in a sequence, which normally involves moving a, a few motors all at the same time and getting their timing exactly right. I'm guilty of um, taking my work home with me. I, I sort of have a lot of sort of waking up at four in the morning and sort of plotting and working, working out how to do things, but. I don't actually mind it because um, it is quite a, quite a good time to do it and uh, yeah, and I've, by the time I have breakfast I've sort of worked out what I'm going to do that day. So the next stage is, is the stage that I'm probably most uncomfortable with. It's not, it's not something that I've I done before and I, I know that it's a, it's a kind of process of trial and error which means because I haven't got any real drawings to go by it's all going to be done by eye and it's going to be my interpretation of, of how I see that piece of Eric. The process will involve um, getting a bit of card and uh, covering Eric in the piece of Eric that I want to cover with the aluminium, fitting the card, cutting it out, laying it onto the aluminium, cutting the aluminium out, then offering the aluminium up onto Eric, and, uh, and just keep on taking it on and off and trimming it and cutting it until it, it fits and looks right. So the next bit is just getting rid of the sharp edges. So use one of these just to round them off. So now you have to bend it into shape. And this is quite a haphazard procedure because there's just, it's just completely random, to be honest. So I get a rough idea of where it's gonna bend. And then you, you know, you add the frilly bits at the end to cover the rough edges. Right now he's still metal, I think. And uh, when he moves, you see a little bit of sole. So this is the um, the Rapu unit, which I guess is kind of um, Eric's brain. It's where you. I program all the movement sequences into him and we can trigger them independently. And uh, it also has his voice in it. And uh, yeah, a very simple unit that I use in most of my robots actually. It runs on DMX or independently depending on what you want to do with it. Oh, hello there. Oh. Oh, this body feels different. I'm all full of wires and motors and fancy 21st century electronics instead of pulleys and gears from the 1920s. Right, where was I? Oh yes, hello. My name is Eric and I'm thrilled to be alive.
Morning all. Um, I'm just polishing Eric before um, the transport comes to pick him up and take him to the, the London Science Museum. Uh, yeah, he's, he's off today and um, we're going to miss him around here. There was enormous pressure to, to get it right. You know, he was, it is a replica and it had to look like him and function like him. I think, you know, especially members of the family you know, from the original creator, you know, they wanted it to be the same and be good and hopefully, you know, I've done it justice. Being a robot builder to help uh, create the original robot is quite something. Yeah, I've been here 15 years and in, within those 15 years I've created uh, over 20 or more robots and um, yeah, it's always good to see one finished.